All right, so we're learning more about how the Prime Minister has also made a big attack on the INDI alliance in the BJP's parliamentary meeting before the parliament sessions. He had compared the INDI alliance to the PFI and the East India Company. All right, now there's more information coming in. We're learning that the Rajya Sabha has also been adjourned. Remember, this comes just a short while after both of the houses began, the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. But just a short, few short minutes uh, after the Lok Sabha session began, it adjourned. Now we're also learning that the Rajya Sabha session has adjourned. When it comes to the recent developments that have taken place in the parliament in both of the houses, we'll tell you a little bit more about what just went, uh, what, what just occurred in the Rajya Sabha. Essentially, the Rajya Sabha chairman and the vice president, Jagdeep Dankar, he was reading out the names of those who have moved a notice under Rule 267 to discuss Manipur. Uh, and essentially, there were approximately 50 notices which had been issued. We're crossing over to CNN News 18 senior editor Palavi Ghosh. Uh, Palavi, Lok Sabha has been adjourned. Rajya Sabha has also been adjourned now. Yeah, so for the viewers who are just joining in, a quick recap of it. Mm -hmm. So what happened is, first of all, the Prime Minister's very strong attack on the India front at the Parliamentary Party meeting of the BJP. Simultaneously, there was a meeting going on of the India front also, and the big decision which they took out of that was to corner the Prime Minister to speak, and they realized the only way they can do it is to have a no-confidence motion to be moved against his government in Lok Sabha, which requires 50 MPs to sign it, and opposition doesn't think that's going to be difficult to get. Meanwhile, what happened in Rajya Sabha, I would say, Ayesha, is even more interesting. The chairperson gets up by saying that I agree with Derek O'Brien's suggestion that there should be a Rule 267 under which the discussion takes place. What does 267 essentially mean? Suspension, immediate suspension of all business, motion and notice to be moved, and you have a discussion. This 267 50 notices and he reads out the name of each of those 50 members who have given notices and therefore the opposition I think at some point of time felt enthused that finally we are going to be having a discussion on 267 but then there was a catch. The catch was that the chairperson says that we have three notices which have been given by three MPs under rule 176 and that is on crime against women. Also, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, as well as Bengal. I'm so sorry. Please that stay with us. We're of... listening to what Ravi Shankar Prasad had to say. हमको गर्व है अपने प्रधानमंत्री आदरणीय मोदी जी पर. उन्होंने एक नई आशा जगाई है. आज 24 में भी हम ही आने वाले हैं. दुनिया भी यही जानती है, देश भी यही जानता है, विपक्ष भी ये समझता है. लेकिन बार-बार विरोध करना. वो मान चुके हैं कि उन्हें सत्ता में नहीं आना. और उन्होंने एक बहुत बड़ी टिप्पणी की कि इंडियन नेशनल कांग्रेस एक अंग्रेज ने बनाया था ईस्ट इंडिया कंपनी भी अंग्रेजों ने बनाया था आजकल लोग इंडियन मुजाहिदीन भी नाम रखते हैं इंडियन पीपल्स फ्रंट भी नाम रखते हैं तो चेहरे पे चेहरे लिखाते हैं सच्चाई कुछ और है उन्होंने हम लोग को कहा कि हम सभी जागृत हों सुबह की भोर की तरह देश हमारी पुनः अपेक्षा कर रहा है और निश्चित हम जीतेंगे और आज मैं कह देता हूं 24 का रिजल्ट आएगा ना तो जो संख्या है ना हारे हुए थके हुए निराश विपक्ष की इनकी संख्या और कम हो जाएगी जो ये जो ये विपक्ष के लोग हैं जो, जो प्रोटेस्ट कर रहे हैं इंडिया अलायंस के नाम से वो उनमें से कुछ नेता अविश्वास प्रस्ताव लाने के विपक्ष में सरकार के अरे भाई आप सब लेके आइए ना चर्चा तो कराइए ना चर्चा से क्यों भागते हैं अविश्वास प्रस्ताव भी लाएंगे तो चर्चा करनी पड़ेगी ना वो तो उसकी भी तो पराजय निश्चित है लेकिन चर्चा तो करो ताकि हम भी तो कहें बात निकलेगी तो बहुत दूर तलक जाएगी। what we've just seen is that the deadlock in the parliament continues between the center and the opposition. But let's talk about one piece of information that's come to light. That is what the prime minister has said in the BJP's, BJP's parliamentary meeting. What he has done is he's hit out at the opposition. This is all ahead of 2024. He's comparing the name of the new alliance to the PFI. He's also comparing it to the East India Trading Company. How do you think the opposition is going to respond to this? Well, by just keeping India as a name or as an acronym doesn't mean that you are representing the country. I mean, we all know you are. All of them are uh, representing their personal interests. Uh, their, their interest uh, with the corruption they have done in the last few years, and then uh, there are people who have been uh, uh, convicted, who have been accused, who are on bail, uh, who are in jail, in cases of corruption. So they are equivalent to East India Company because. All these people have only their business interests in mind. They have nothing like uh, serving the country. And then we are very sure that in coming elections also, country will give us another chance to serve them again and then ensure 
that the last man in the uh, line is taken care as it's been done by the Prime Minister Modi. Mr. Singh, I request that you stay with us because we also have Mr. Rashid Alvi from the Congress joining us on the broadcast right now. Mr. Alvi, thank you so much for speaking to CNN News 18 this afternoon. Could you give us your response to what the Prime Minister has said? He's compared the new alliance, the INDIA, to the PFI and the East India Trading Company. How do you respond to this? Prime Minister is scared of this uh, unity of the opposition. That is the reason he has given this statement. And he has gone to this extent that he hates, it appears he hates India. What is constitution? Constitution of India. What is democracy? Democracy of India. What is this parliament? Parliament of India. How can he uh, hate uh, the word India? It is, it is basically he is scared of uh, the unity of opposition. Our prime minister uh, actually, uh, he knows very well that in 2024, uh, time has come uh, to go. That is the reason he is giving such a statements. Basically, prime minister should speak. What has he done in last nine years? He, he doesn't speak anything about price rise. He doesn't speak about uh, unemployment. He doesn't speak about uh, economy of the country. He has no business to criticize India at all. And as far as uh, this uh, unity of the uh, opposition is concerned, we are sure that we are coming to power. And uh, as far as corruption is concerned, Prime Minister has zero tolerance for corruption. And I congratulate him that he can fight corruption along with Ajit Pawar Saab, about whom his uh, former chief minister used to say, Chakki piecing, Chakki piecing, Chakki piecing. And even Bhujwal Saab, he is with him. Uh, Prime Minister can fight corruption along with all these leaders, including Chief Minister of uh, Assam, because they know uh, about the uh, corruption, mm -hmm. what is corruption and how does it happen. So it is easy for, for Prime Minister. Now there is no one in a position about whom he can say that he's a corrupt person. All of them have joined Bharati Janta Party. So it is, he will feel comfortable to fight uh, corruption. Mr. Singh, your response? Well, sure. Uh, uh, Mr. Alvi has not responded on the convicts, the accused, and the people out on bail. And, uh, if there is any case against Mr. Pawar or anyone else, I mean, there are courts which are there, and they can move to the court and then seek justice from there. But I'm talking about people, Lalu Yadav, who's already convicted, has spent time in the jail. Uh, people who are uh, accused are, are, are in jail are like, so Sodhi and Sundar Jain are uh, out on bail are like Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi. I mean, so, and then none of them is going to get the cases quashed. None of them is going to the court to get the cases quashed so that court can give them some relief. But, and uh, one of them has gone also and, and court has denied them the relief also and then further uh, put structures uh, on the uh, matter. But the concern is bigger. The concern is that there are a set of people who are they are set to loot the country. They have track record of doing so. That's why they have been compared with East India Company. And there are a set of people who are there to serve the country. And then as for Mr. Alvi, please check on who got in the Ayushman Bharat, 5 lakh rupees health insurance for every uh, individual in the country, who got the uh, Kasan Saman Nidhi, both are covering more than 11 crore farmers in the country, who helped the people in the corona when all of the opposition was eyeing for uh, their political uh, objectives. So, country knows it well that who has been serving the country and who have been looting the country. Mr. Singh, thank you for that. Do stay with us. Mr. Alvi, uh, thank you as well for telling us more about that perspective that you have. But I want to talk more about what's taking place in Parliament. The fact that the deadlock is now continuing for the fourth day. Remember, Parliament began last week and for the fourth day now we're seeing multiple adjournments. Uh, we've also seen suspensions. Why exactly is the push for a, a discussion on Manipur? All right, we seem to have lost that connection with Mr. Rashid Alvi and uh, Mr. R.P. Singh as well. But essentially, the question that was to be posed was, why exactly is a discussion on Manipur not happening? Uh, why is the demand, essentially, for a discussion to happen under certain rules? Why are we getting to the nitty-gritties of it? 